sharing. I learned my first life lesson about sharing in my 20s. I was at my last year of college at the time. I was a smart girl. I was studying hard, very hard. So I pretend to have knowledge. I pretend to be smart. And uh, you know, the day of my final test before graduation, I entered the room. I was very, very confident. I look at the committee. And I start my talk in a confident way. I was there to show my knowledge. And I was sure I was going to answer any question. I was so confident in my knowledge. But I was not prepared for the question that was going to come up. You know, one of the professor, the professor of chemistry, stopped me and uh, she said, oh, Miss Rigutto, did you read The Little Flower of St. Francis? No, no, I say, Little Flower of St. Francis. And she looked at me and she said, oh, you should. Only an in-depth knowledge of this book is worth more than a college education, she said. A book, a book more than a college education. I never heard anything about that book. You know, I was so upset with her, no, because she ruined my wow moment. But I was smart. So, on my way back home, I just stopped to a bookshop and I bought that book. That book telling the story of St. Francis and his followers. I read that book only a few years later. But when I read it, huh, I understood what that professor wanted to tell me. He want, she wanted to tell me that there is no knowledge if you are not able to share it. That the real value of any information is in sharing. And you know, I was so proud of my knowledge that I wasn't really sharing it. I was keeping it for myself, for my small ivory tower. I was supposed to share it to generate new knowledge. <coughs> 30 years later, I have been offered a job in the ivory tower. Huh. I have been called there because they wanted me to train a young researcher in science communication. They asked me to train them so they can reach a broader public, like you. Oh, easy job, I say. No, it wasn't easy at all. You know, because I presume, I took for granted that those researchers were willing to communicate. They were not. They didn't want to. <laughs> and then, furthermore, when I was telling words like social media, Facebook, Twitter, you know, I was causing hives to all the inhabitants of the tower. I say, okay, so why did you call me? What are you expecting from me? And they say, well, we just want you to teach us some new techniques to simplify 
communication, to simplify difficult science topics. I am an economist. I deal with data. I deal with market. I don't deal with grammar. You know, and then I'm trained to see the bull picture, not rein to reinvent the wheel. I was going to give you up. I say, okay, I will throw in the towel. It's not for me, but then I say, no. Stop it, Christina. It's time to go back, to go back to the past. It's time to go back to simplicity. It's time to go back to the lesson you learned. So stop teaching and start sharing. I know very well that researcher cannot communicate information about their research until it is published in peer review. But you know, there are a lot of things that can be communicated as well. And I know as well that if you communicate only the end of the process, you are not communicating because people cannot see the full picture. So you have to communicate during the process. It's, you see, like what she's doing. If you see a picture, you say, oh, nice picture or bad picture. But you know what is the difference? The difference is here. If you look at her while she's making this picture, you understand something about the final result. It's different to see the final result and seeing then, seeing her while she's drawing. You can understand more of her job while she's drawing. And that's what I wanted to share with the scientific communication, community. And so what I did, as I say, I stop teaching, I start sharing. I start sharing my experience, my passion about my job. I told them how I feel when I have to design a communication plan, when I have to design an education plan. I, I told them about my joy, my passion, about my failure as well. And you know, while I were talking, I saw in their faces they were starting to see the big picture as well. And they were starting to understand that they have not to communicate only at the end of the process, but they have to start to integrate communication during the whole process. They have to start to say why they care, why they are there in their lab with their lab coat, doing research all the day long. They are there because they care for society and they have to tell this to the society because if people can see the whole process, they can understand research, they can understand why research is important for the society and why research is important for their lives. They can see in that what is happening inside there. And so they can feel that the researcher work is important. And you know, in all this seven year, of my life, training researcher, day after day, month after month. I've trained some young researchers that today are very smart science communicator. They are smart communicator because they are integrating communication during the whole process of their research. They are telling people directly why, why they care. They are connecting with people and they are sharing what they know to create new knowledge. And that's 
exactly the same lesson I learned 30 years ago, that if you connect with people and you share your knowledge, you really care for society. Thank you.